Madison, and today we're going to be talking about techniques for working safely in biosafety cabinets and other fumigates. When you're starting to use a cabinet, the first thing you want to do is come in and turn it on. Um, some of the older biosafety cabinets will actually let you turn the light on without the blower on. So you turn on the light and the blower, then check what the pressure gauge is reading and compare the pressure gauge reading to what's on the certification sticker to make sure that nothing has changed with the other filters. And I'm seeing somewhere between 4, 0.4 and 0.5 and the number on the sticker says 0.45, so that sounds good to me. Next thing that you should do is do the decontamination of the cabinet. Uh, depending on what type of work you're doing in the cabinet, that might mean decontaminating just the work surface or the entire cabinet. And then before and after, again, depends on whether you're doing like tissue culture work. If you're doing tissue culture, any kind of clean work in the cabinet, then decontaminating the cabinet all over the place before you use the cabinet is really important. Okay, so then after you disinfect it, um, especially after you do your wipe down, use like an excess so you leave the surface wet so that you get contact time while you're going and getting all your supplies. Go get your supplies after you do the decon because then that forces you to have contact time. If you bring all your supplies over to, over to the cabinet, I'm going to turn it off so you can hear me better. Um, if you bring all your supplies up to the cabinet and then do the decon, I guarantee you won't wait enough time for the decon because sitting here and waiting for five minutes seems like an eternity when you're, when you're in a rush trying to get work done. So what I recommend is to wait to go get your supplies until after you do the decon that forces you to have the contact time. It also gives you time for, it gives the biosafety cabinet time to purge contaminated air from the room out of the cabinet, which you need three or four or five minutes to do. So I have a theatrical fog machine here, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna show first how the airflow splits inside the cabinet. So I'll just turn on the fog. So you can see that some of it's going out the back, and some of it's coming towards the front, right? So if I'm working with the, you know, with the anthrax or the tetramethyl death or whatever, notice how it's coming out towards me, right? Now, from the outside, you can see that it's capturing air from the outside and it's going in that front grill, right? So let's just say that we do something like block the front grill, right? See that? This is why you don't want to block the front grill, because it's really easy for the air from the inside of the cabinet to come out and, and, and now we're breathing it, right? Um, same thing works going in the other direction. So if you block the front grill, then the air might go past the front grill and get caught on the inside. It's kind of hard to see it. It's tough to see it because of all the, of all the turbulence, but it's the same thing. <laughs> so then, here's the other scary thing. I'm just going to pretend like I'm reaching for a pipette. Notice that I'm not like, you know, if I move my hand radically, obviously there's a lot that's going to come out. But just moving my hand like that, that's not very fast. If I were reaching for a pipette, I would do that. See how much it came out? Did you guys see that? So this is what you really want to take back to your labs and help people to understand, is if they're moving their hands like that, then whatever is inside the cabinet is coming out into the lab. And the same thing is happening in the reverse. If the goal is to keep the cell culture clean, then if you move your hand like that to grab something and reach back into the cabinet, then you're going to get potentially contaminated air coming in and contaminating your cultures. A good idea is to start a procedure where other people in the lab are aware not to walk right behind whoever is working the biosafety cabinet. You give maybe at least three feet of distance behind their back, not from the cabinet, but come behind their back, or take another path to get to where they need to 